A lot of stories and plot points are introduced throughout Honkai Impact Fur. They help define the cast by influencing their circumstances and motives in the story. Most of the time, we see our characters go through a transition period where they adopt new beliefs and goals, usually after they have come to terms with or overcome their circumstances. The time it takes before they actually do that vary widely between each character, and some are still left unattended to this day. As no one knows when these stories are going to be brought up again, I'm gonna leave the latest day of editing as a reference point. Anyway, here are some of the unresolved stories and plot points I have picked out that was introduced and left behind in favor of moving the plot forward or was just left there. I will also be trying to come up with a possible explanation for these stories. In the Mega Second Eruption, we got an appearance from a younger Kokolia. Kokolia was a Red Army officer stationed in Siberia at the time of the outbreak. One night, she walked in on her superior officer committing theft, to which oh, she stealing. attempted to arrest him. He's stealing. Hey, hey. But unfortunately for her, with something called corruption, Kokolia was arrested instead. In a panel when the colonel was giving his motives for doing what he's doing, Fev, we see him holding a pendant with a picture of his wife, who has a similar features to Bronya. Yeah, the colonel and his wife is implied to be Bronya's parents. But that's not why I put them in this video. A bit later, the colonel ate dirt, but her pregnant mother is still safe along with Kokolia, taken in by Shikso, courtesy of Cecilia. This was the last time we ever see them until many years later. Questions arise once we recall that Bronya was an orphan raised to be a killing machine by Siberian warlords after Siberia erupts in civil war following second eruption. There's a missing time window between when her mother was rescued by Shikso and when Bronya became an orphan and became a child soldier. To explain this, I want you guys to think about how Shikso acts as a humanitarian aid organization. We have seen Shikso actively revitalizing the Siberian ecosystem them, as seen in alien space. So we can assume that they participate in giving foreign aid to struggling regions that was hit by the Honkai, like for some good PR you know. With this knowledge, we go back to Bronya and her mom. If they were taken in by Shikso, then how did they end up in Siberia again to allow local warlords to get custody of Bronya? You could say that Shikso sent them back to Siberia, but that is a dumb move to make when you consider that Siberia was destroyed by second eruption. Well, you could say that Siberia is massive so they can relocate them to a safer region in Siberia, which I highly doubt because they clearly state that much of Siberia was destroyed. But even if they were actually safe places, it still doesn't explain why her mother lost custody of Bronya to the warlords, which can only happen if they were relocated to an unstable region. We don't even know if Bronya's mother is still alive. Bronya describes herself as an orphan, which implies that her parents are dead. But since when are characters' testimonies reliable anyways? Just look at that one time we were led to believe that the real Kiana is dead. <laughs> Not calling any names. So the only explanation for this is that Shikso just sent them back to Siberia where all the warlords were fighting, which they can realistically do because according to the manga, they didn't take in that many people. So they could just do the good old cover up and avoid the responsibility. This is Shikso under auto after all, what can you expect? Bronya never questioned this, nor does she seem to care about her parents' whereabouts, just like the next person coming up. At the start of the game, Kiana along with her friends are already in Shikso, which glossed over how and why they ended up there in the first place. So Kiana, Mei and Bronya was rescued out of Nagasora, which was hit by Mei turning Hersher. After they subdued the Hersher, the trio joined Shikso, with particularly Kiana joining after making a deal with Teresa, that if she were to become an A-rank Valkyrie, Teresa would give her her father's whereabouts, which was Kiana's motive for wandering around places before she became a Valkyrie. When was the last time this motive actually mattered to what Kiana is trying to do in the story? It was abandoned. Since Kiana got to Ark City, her goal changed to finding a way to control her powers, which you could say was more important than finding her father, but even when she's already able to control her powers, she still doesn't show any interest in actually finding Siegfried anymore. Now, I'm aware that chapter 28 is possibly giving some hints to this and this video was made before I played it, so please understand that this plotline may actually 
be getting a revisit soon enough. Anyway, before Coluston, the last time we saw Siegfried was him getting his Shamash stolen and possibly getting captured, and we heard nothing from him since. This is something that I've been wanting to talk about since it was left behind for so long. So I would love to see Kiana actually remembering why she originally became a Valkyrie for. Also, if you're enjoying this so far, please leave a like so this video can reach more people. Thank you. Now, we only have been exclusively talking about the current era, so let's go back in time to the previous one. Our best insight into the previous era comes from Fuhua. She's the only person that's still alive today that doesn't dodge every single question like a certain someone. We got her backstory in an extra chapter about divine keys. The main idea was that when a person feels strong emotions or convictions, they can force a transformation that makes them more powerful. In Fuhua's case, she wanted to know about why her mentor, Himiko, not the one we know, but the one from the previous era, turned her shirt. What happened was that one day, Fuhua's mentor randomly turned her shirt and kills everyone in her squad, except for Fuhua. Fuhua wanted to know why her mentor went berserk and that was the driving force behind her transformation in the backstory. As per usual, this was never brought up again. Did she find out or did she just give up? No one knows. We really only see her saying that her mentor turned her shirt and that's about it. I actually have a decent idea why her mentor could possibly have turned. It's about the commonly referred to dark side of Fire Moth, which includes human experiments, particularly the Stigma Project, which is about developing stigmas. In game, we get a memory fragments of how fellow Fire Moth members view the experiments, which is to say fairly divisive, so we can reliably guess that Fuhua's mentor might have found out about it and that filled her with rage, propelling her to turning her shirt. Because she is the one who took in struggling children like Fuhua, so finding out that her own organization is committing atrocities behind the scenes would be a great reason to go berserk. Kevin is someone that has a decent amount of backstory to him, so a short summary. After losing the final battle of the previous era, he and some other survivors hibernated until present day. Once they re-emerge, we see Kevin holding a synthetic baby made from his genes along with his lovers. That's about the last time we see this baby. I have seen people theorize this baby was the APHO protagonist, which I disagree. As you know, the Kaslana family was under Shikso for many years, and they are descendants of of Kevin. So what needs to happen is that Kevin somehow reached out to Shikso and entrust his baby to them. As for why he would do that, we really have no idea. While most of these stories and plot points I chose can be explained with basic assumptions, I believe it would be better if they get a direct explanation so there's no confusion to be had while talking about it. Will they actually give closure to any of these things? Probably not. Unless it's super important to a character like the Siegfried situation or well, I originally planned to include that in this video, but as you know, that's not really necessary anymore. Anyway, I plan on making an afterthought video after I finish it. Once it comes over to global, like tomorrow, I think, that's when I'm recording this, yeah. Most of the stuff I put in this video can be like ignored because it wouldn't make that much of a difference whether it gets developed or not. But what do you think? I'd love to hear your own explanation or interpretation of these stories down below. And that has been it for today. Have a good one.